And hello again. And here we are, back to the spirit of watercolor as it's getting cold out. It's almost, we're moving from October into November soon. Halloween is coming. Autumn colors are bright. Leaves have been falling, but there's still a lot of red and orange and beautiful colors. So we're going to continue part two of um, uh, painting the autumn colors on Sutton's Bay from my vacation. Part one, if you watched it, um, we, we worked from um, my sketches here that I did on the bay. And I, I'm going to finish these a little bit on the video on part two. Also was redoing this sketch and these both have information. Okay, this one is a little more proportional to me and the tree is where I want it. And the rocks are going to be here. And I started to play a little with the, um, the foreground. And uh, then this is what we did in part one where we just basically did the sky and the water. And I was so pleased with this. I showed you this in um, an intro, you know, stay tuned video and then in the actual video. And we, we did this after we did some sketch painting. So now we're going to take this and we're going to start to move forward and bring these colors in, these beautiful autumn colors, into the painting, into the rocks in the foreground, and uh, the background as well. Although my background's going to be a little more back there, smaller, a little, little bit lighter, but still some intense, beautiful golds, oranges, reds, because that's what was back there on the, the land. So here are the two sketches. Okay, so this is the one I was just finishing up, and then this is the other one where I kind of went in again a little more like the composition I want, where the background's smaller, and then I'm starting into the foreground. If you um, remember the more finished piece I'm doing, it just has the sky and the water, and I'm trying to make that decision. I have friends telling me just to leave that painting alone, so I might, and I might have to redo it and come back to y'all, because I really like how it came out without any of the rocks or trees in it, so or the background uh, uh, land on the bay. So I may redo that just so I have a plan A and plan B, because um, when they come out that great, and I really find everybody I've spoken to likes the piece, um, I'm talking about, let me grab it here, Ooh um, here, that one. It's really hard to want to go back into this because, you know, I'm, I'm being a little too, I guess, timid, so I'm going to redo this so I have two copies of it, and I will be right back with you. We'll do one of them where we add the trees, like that sketch here. And some land and then some rocks like we have in the other one and uh, put some foliage on that tree some I mean leaves <laughs> okay I'll see you in a minute so as we uh, head into finishing this painting we look at our sketch here and we look at the sketch over there I, I did repaint this because that was so lovely that in case um, you know I decide I just like it with just the water which it's very tempting on that original piece I did. Um, you know, it might it might just be really nice. I'm going to graduate that a little bit, let it flow down. I did wet the paper, but sometimes it dries more quickly than other times. Bring in a little bit of uh, the phthalo to push this forward. Um, back here, you see some stronger values of the original blue. Cirrus blue, but then here I want to bring in just a little stronger, and I want to bring this down a little, you know, where the rocks are here. So we have um, a little more of this in here, just to make these waves look like they're coming it toward us, right? I like that. It's really enjoyable. Just to get a little more, ooh, like that. Okay, that that phthalo is so transparent and rich, a beautiful color. There, more like that, and we'll soften it a little. Okay. Uh, waves coming at us here. Yeah, oh, that's what we like. And we gotta get that right wetness to, to, um, to dryness, and it kind of mimics that wave effect. I'm gonna bring a little more over here. Let's see. And it should 
flow. If it doesn't flow, just add a little water to it so it'll start to flow down for you. And then I'm going to soften a little more cirrus here, I think. Um, just down a little bit further. I'm not sure if I'm going to need to do that. Let's, let's see. Sometimes just those flowing washes really mimic water so nicely. It makes the effect of water. So, yeah, just a little touch here as well. because it's a little chilly, but at the same time, um, it is also children playing because Halloween's they're having a party next door, so I've got my heater on to also soften the sound. Now I'm going to bring in some of my beautiful colors. We have these beautiful um, reds and oranges, and I also I'm very much considering bringing in some of these interference shimmer colors that we have had in the past to just really make some uh, iridescent effects in the background. I've got the um, Autumn Mystery, and then there's uh, some of the magenta, and uh, there's some topaz. Those may come in real handy because it's a green, the topaz. The, the Autumn Mystery is... Um, an orangey, earthy color, autumny color, and the the mauve has a bit of a purple, but it's kind of more of a shimmery, pearlescent kind of a with a pale, pale purple to it. it can be very beautiful too, just to create some luminosity in the painting. Okay, so looking at our sketch, I want to bring in some land, and I want to bring in a trunk over there, and I'm going to just use my smaller half inch flat for the tree, okay, and um, we're going to use one of our beautiful colors that's sort of a brown, any kind of earth brown you want there. I'm mixing some browns and blacks and kind of dry brushing here. And we'll come up with our, our trunk off to the side here. I'm not, I haven't drawn it on here, um, but I know where it's supposed to be. So we're just going to kind of bring it in here. Um, our land is here, so we'll probably start there. Ooh, wait just a sec here. It might not be wet enough. Okay. Just so we kind of know where it's going to be coming up in a dry brush sense and then flat on the side. We'll create some uh, branches, so to speak. I can always come back in with darker values later, right? Right. Okay. And we will, but for the moment, I'm just trying to sketch out with my brush. I did start to etch in a little bit here. While I was looking for my palette knife, I realized that I could start to outline with this soft kind of, I think that's hematite genuine, which is a Primatech color mixed with some of this uh, brown. I'm really not sure which brown that is at this point. It's either a sienna, conacridone sienna, or it could be burnt sienna. But if you have burnt sienna, that'll work. So, um, you know, just coming in, you can use your flat knife and or you can use your palette knife. Um, I have two sizes of palette knife. I'm going to use the smaller one. Oh my, that heater's working. And um, we'll come in and create some of those rocks, okay? I am, if, like I mentioned before, if you see my rocks in the sketches, um, they're not showing off the light as much as I'd like, so I'm going to kind of 
make the rocks so that we can see some of the white of them also here. Okay, but for now, just to get some nice definitions and lines, I want to come in and make some of those beautiful rocks we had. Okay. Um, out on Sutton's Bay. And sometimes when you use a palette knife, you will see things happen that you might not exactly expect, but that's what I really enjoy. Make sure this is in there. And uh, just getting some of the rock formations here. And uh, I might need to use my, my flat brush too because some of that might be larger than the rocks actually were. And I also want to bring those down a little so that kind of flows a little into the land and we get some interesting things going on there as well. How it like is a little too large, and then even a smaller one. sponge. Here's a nice sponge. Okay. I want to do a little more of that chisel work too in the rocks, but I'm going to let that dry for a moment and see what I've got. I'd like to bring in more of those in there. in my tree. That is very red, isn't it? So let's start with some um, let's start with some of that. Bring some in some gently into our tree. Which it had some red. It was kind of fading and I I kind of wished it was a little brighter, um, so I'm creating that due to my own desire of a little prettier. And those are kind of coming down, so I may need to add more branches, or and there might be some yellow or brown in that tree as well. Every time I turn off the fan, <laughs> the kids start howling. I don't understand how that works. But. I need to make my tree a little more defined too. Get more of that reddish. It could be quite a burnt orange. It's a beautiful color that needs to go into our tree here. I've just been detailing in the rocks with the flat brush more. 
and that little bit of blue I'm just kind of coming over it with a wash of uh, color here just to um, kind of blend that out a little and just getting a nice wet wash of beautiful flowing sand there a little more um, yeah we'll do that here too and up and around here um, I'll just kind of graduate that out. I'm just doing this holding the br the uh, the uh, camera for now, just because I'm trying to uh, get close enough for you and just kind of get the information down. But I think you'll see that we have a really nice painting so far, and that um, I don't know how much more we're going to need to really do. Um, I just really want to soften that and maybe have the water and the... Uh, there may be some rocks in the water, like we saw at the beach there, which was really neat. You know, there was a few rocks into that water, which I might do softly as that dries. Okay. So I just want to, you know, just a few little bits of rock in here, just into the water, but they're kind of wet because they're underwater. They might come up here a little bit where it's not so wet and uh, kind of go down into the water. Okay. Isn't this lovely? That is really reminding me of the bay now. The only thing I left to do is up there is to do the the land in the background. And decide if we've got enough information down here. Maybe just a little more of the rocks. Just little hit, hints of information here. Make sure the light's good here. As it comes down. Yeah, I'm liking this painting now. Okay, awesome. <laughs> Back up here, we have, um, I'm just going to take a soft wash of the, um, um, of, of water, actually. And then we'll bring in some wet on wet just here to make a little bit of the land here. Again, it's softer here. Just, um to let us know there's a bay back there. It should it should apply better to this nice paper versus the, um, remember this is way we clear the brush, make sure it's clear. Sometimes we jump ahead or I do. Uh, make sure my head is not in there if possible. Um, are we straight? And I'm just coming in where I want my bay my land on the bay means. I'm just gonna kinda hint at it back there. Okay. Some of those reds from the tree might get in there and I'm okay with that. I should have applied that after. Ooh, I think some of that red can come in and hint at my land here. That'll be just just right. Okay. And uh right down there. Um huh. and then we'll bring in stronger colors here on the bay as we go. But I kind of want it just really soft and hinted back there. I was going to put in a brown now instead of got like a red, but actually the reds are what's so pretty in the background of the autumn colors that were back on the bay. Ooh, wait, and it's kind of going into the water, so we will have a little, perhaps we can have a little reflection of color here too. And that's okay. getting better and better. Should I bring in a little bit of that orange, just tiny bits into the land or the foreground, just to pop some of this forward. I'll show you what I mean. It doesn't, um, you're like, why do you want orange in your, in your rocks? Well, sometimes colors reflect and bounce, you know, some of the rocks might be wet and we might get some, some bits of color. And it's kind of like these reds and oranges here. If I bring just a little bit here into some of the foreground, I think we'll, we'll see that our eye is going to kind of come up to the foreground here. Um, and uh, it'll lead your eye around the page, which is the compositional thing that I like to do. It doesn't have to be really strong either, like, you know, like, it can just be soft hints of color. 
might bring in some yellows in there too because in those trees there's probably some golds and yellows like maybe chromacridone gold or something. Let's put in a little more of this in. Just kind of adds a little bit of life to the painting as well. Okay. Um, well not necessarily that much. You know what I'm saying? Not that much is really necessary. It's just here. Here. I probably should be using. No, it doesn't matter. Just bring some color. Okay. Because this is your world. It's how how I saw it. I think I was seeing uh, some beautiful colors all around me there. And it was really making me happy. And um, sometimes I think I imagined there was more color in the tree than there was, but it, it really did make me happy. See, I brought more that orange, and there's still a little bit of that blue in there, and it's very delicate and pretty. No, I think this is quite a nice painting. I'm going to just bring a bit more of that orange down into my. Uh, I'm sort of making a. Just a little more a lively uh, uh, land because <laughs> you know in sand you can see colors you know it's you know it can be sort of a, that's adding a bit of life to that kind of a glow that's what it is it's like a glow So I really hope you enjoyed watching um, the uh, two parts of uh, painting uh, Sutton's Bay in the bottom. I added some leaves into the foreground that um, had fallen from the tree and uh, did a little more work on the rocks and the water, just bringing in a little more um, uh, values just to make the water come forward. And um, I really like how it came out. I hope that you will let me know what you think. I know that the two videos became a little long, but um, sometimes we want to get in there and just take our time and do the work. You know, it, it's very important to um, take time to do things well and to learn, you know, proper techniques. So I do go slower. I know that sometimes people want to just get from point A to point B so quickly in a fast-paced world, right? But this is where we come together and we slow down and we enjoy uh, being together and experiencing um, learning and building skills. Did you know that talent, which you have, plus skills, which means practicing until you can do these techniques and uh, gimmicks and tricks as they call them as well. Um, the more you do talent plus skill equals ability. So please join me again soon. We will do some shorter videos too um, where we just focus in on a technique or a kind of a paint uh, color and what you can do with it. I did realize in this that there are some paints where when I go from the most highest concentration of the paint to the least colors change and that might be a fun thing to play with too like when I did the dark sea the quinacridone um, burnt or deep gold quinacridone deep gold goes from like a rich orangey brown and it blends out into this gorgeous gold and yellow those kinds of things can be very advantageous to know about so so please come back please like and subscribe and join me in the next video and and you know uh, and let me know, you know, some things you'd like to see because, um, you know, it's just such a wonderful me and there's so much to it. And you may have questions, you may have things, and please comment. Let me know what you think of these videos and what you, you know, like in the future. And I'll see you soon.